Hello, I am so excited to be joined today by Roya, who is an incredible tech entrepreneur from Afghanistan. She became CEO at the age of 23 and was named one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people in the world at only 25. Roya is on a mission to use tech to transform the lives of millions of women and girls in Afghanistan and developing countries around the world. And we're so fortunate to work alongside Roya at Virgin Unite as the leader of the new now and by supporting her work at the Digital Citizens Fund to create educational and entrepreneurial opportunities for Afghan girls. In light of the Taliban's devastating recent ban of high school girls receiving an education, Royal's work feels more important now than ever. So thank you so much for joining me today to discuss why it's so crucial to create education equality and to invest in high quality STEM education as well. So thank you, Roy. It's lovely to have you um, on Zoom today. Actually, it's my pleasure to be with you today. Thank you for making time to talk with me today. Oh, no, I think what you do is absolutely wonderful. So let's, let's start at the beginning. What was your experience with education and what doors did it open for you? You know, for those who are growing up with the freedom and, you know, opportunity, it might be difficult for them to imagine uh, what another life could be look like, you know, when uh, education is a privilege and afforded to anyone uh, who desire it, operation may seem uh, far away. But I remember, you know, um, uh, how it's uh, it's like to live uh, in other side of the world. I grew up in a society that uh, where access to technology and education was limited and, you know, in uh, some area restricted uh, mostly for women. Uh, many of these women have had a uh, little uh, um, uh, or actually no freedom and opportunity to create a life for themselves. Uh, their lives were well, actually mostly run by, by men. They don't have control of their own finance and some of them, they don't even have permitted to voice their opinion. I think that I was very lucky um, to grow up in a family who believed in, uh, in me and believed in education and uh, they supported me um, uh, through all of my career and my life and uh, because of them I could go, you know, um, uh, go to the schools and, um, and uh, you know, everything, I think that for me it changed, um, especially in, after 2003 when uh, we returned back, um, I was I did my schools in Iran as a refugee, but then uh, when we back to Afghanistan in 2003, things has been changed, and uh, you know, every, and there were more women uh, and more opportunities for women that they can pursue education and uh, they can, um, you know, go uh, be uh, enter into the politics or start the businesses. And um, at that time, I think that the, uh, some things that has changed in my life it was a uh, there was a time that there was an Indian cafe in Herat was open up and. Um, and people talk about this magic box that connect you with the world and you can find any information that you are looking for. And I was so excited to see this. And, and um, I think that uh, for the first time what, um, that I was used computer and internet, uh, I made determined to make somehow the technology be the center of my career. So I went to the schools and, you know, I, 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 I chose computer science as my field at the university. And after graduation, I started to work at Harvard University as IT coordinator. And later on, I started my own businesses and I think that um, you know all of these things uh, could um, be happen all this opportunity were happened to me uh, because of the education and in fact I think that education built a foundation for me to believe on my own ability and skills and uh, you know and um, I, I, I could increase my knowledge and becoming more persistent uh, in, in that this is a lead to have more opportunities that I never could uh, um, you know, um, imagined before, and um, and I think that um, education certainly, uh, in many uh, cases, determine the quality of the individual lives and the way of the um, viewing the way they viewing the world. Yeah, and I and I and I love what you've said before about when a country deprives a girl of education, um, everyone hurts. And you can just see, like, just imagine if you'd been de deprived education, the world would be a poorer place because look where you've got to now and look at all the amazing stuff you've done because of the education that you've had. And um, education is something that is a really, um, a, a topic that's just so close to my heart. We started an education charity within the UK um, to just try and make sure that we could get the best out of our kids and, and um, help them thrive in life not just exams, so the UK system is very exam based. Um, but beyond 
a violation of human rights. Um, what other costs do you think denying a girl's education um, will have? Um, and, and I suppose, sort of, what are you seeing in Afghanistan right now? I think that if a female are not afforded a proper quality of education, the women's systematic operations, uh, which is solely on their gender, will never be taken up. There will be always an inequalities uh, in a society that that they look at the women as a little form of humanity. Therefore, greater access uh, to education is. Uh, necessary to process and establishing a foundation for gender equality and uh, you know empowerment in Afghanistan unfortunately in addition on top of the war and you know the collapse of the Afghan government's last eight months and the lack of you know uh, opportunities for the girls and women there is also a culture uh, tends to be a culture to not recognizing um, a sufficient role a woman play in Afghan society and an economy. And I believe a society whether the woman, not the society at all, you know, uh, but yet for so long, uh, we have ignored the uh, uh, critical role uh, a woman can play in a, um, in a communities and uh, their stabilizing effect. Uh, when we miss uh, women and their potential, um, we lose a great, uh, you know, uh, wealth. Um, uh, in 2018, there was an interesting report by World Bank, uh, which published it through the UNICEF, and they're talking about limited uh, uh, education opportunity for the girls will cost uh, cost up to 13 trillion uh, dollars in lost lifetime and productivity and earnings. And uh, so I think that the untapped talent is of the, the girls and women um, uh, is a barrier to move Afghanistan and global market forward. Uh, not educating women and girls, uh, it's actually costs us money. Do you think there's anything that the wider world can do to help reverse the ban? Or like, what do you think is going to happen next in Afghanistan? I think it's a time for call to international community and also all Muslim worlds to support inclusive educational opportunities in Afghanistan. And and you know the talent of everyone should be realized and uh, and it uh, it's a time that uh, you know uh, is is it uh, essential that the international community is done by uh, by this work um, it is so sad that in to see that how in 2022 many of the girls are not allowed to go to the uh, you know, secondary school or university and are bound from education. I just feel so fortunate to be living in a society where um, with equal opportunities, uh, as say my brother, I've managed to get an education and it's, and that continue that education um, as I've got older. And I, I absolutely couldn't imagine not to have had that. Um, you, you've done so much within your career. I've been so inspired by everything that you've achieved. Um, you've done lots within your business setting, but also in all of your advocacy work. Um, what are the most things you're focusing on at the moment? Um, and um, there's, a, there's a few few things that I'm particularly interested in, um, the Bright Initiative and your Afghan Girls Robotics team. But I'm, I'm sure you've got lots of other stuff to talk about, too. I'm sure. Thank you to Virgin Unite and you know um, that they're giving me amazing support and obviously uh, that was helped a lot uh, through uh, my career and uh, and it's helped me to help many more people in Afghanistan. Uh, last month, uh, the Digital Self Fund launched the Bright Initiative uh, exhibition in partnership with the uh, with Qatar Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Qatar. Uh, development fund at Doha Forum. The exhibition was a showcasing of the uh, all the works of the uh, robots and the works that of the Afghan girls robotic team has done it. Uh, and the idea of the you know um, uh, the exhibition was uh, to call for international communities uh, uh, to support inclusive opportunities in uh, in uh, Afghanistan and also uh, showcase that you know the last twenty years uh, it was. Um, uh, golden uh, opportunity for Afghan, especially for the young girls. What a young girls of like 16, 17 years old are capable of building drones or building, um, you know, um, uh, a detector uh, devices to find mines or metals or uh, they're building a wheelchair that can work uh, with the, the movement of the eyes. I mean, all of this uh, incredible. Um, innovations that these kids uh, build it is just show that if we giving the equal access to opportunity to anyone um, no matter where do you live whether you live in United States you live in Afghanistan you live in Yemen or UK or anywhere else uh, you can be the next inventor and designer we also uh, working on uh, another projects uh, which are other, uh, another amazing projects that is an um, uh, online platform with the help of the new now 
uh, that uh, we designed this platform to allow the women uh, in Afghanistan uh, that they can have a voice and they can write in their opinions uh, and uh, they can earn money by uh, by sharing their contents in this platform. Um, uh, so that's another project that we are working on that. And, um, and is that anonymously done or is that is it safe to do it saying your real names? Yes, it would be anonymously. So they don't need to use their names and uh, they can write it about technology. It's not a political uh, platform, but it's about uh, the women. They can um, talking about technology, entrepreneurship. You know, there are lots of uh, talented women in Afghanistan, the professors, and they want to uh, share their research about, uh, you know, science and engineering. Or the women can write about blogs, about poem and uh, in some part of the platform is allowed uh, the writers and reporters who report about the, the violence of, against of the women. I remember when the Taliban offensive came in last year, I got, we got emails from you about getting a lot of that robotics team to safety in Qatar. Um, it was an amazing effort. Can you tell us about um, what, what you did to get the girls out, um, how the girls are doing now, and also the ones that are left behind in Afghanistan, how they're doing? Sure. Um, you know, um, thank you to uh, Virgin uh, United again for their support uh, during that time. You know, it was uh, it's really was uncertain and, um, and and during the chaos and so uncertainly, um, uh, everybody was scared. That, you know, what's going to happen the next? And there was a, a number of uh, robotic team member uh, robotic uh, teams uh, were in Kabul at the time, and uh, we were tried before to take them out of the country, but it was uh, very difficult because during the pandemic. Getting visa um, was another issue, and um, and then when the Kabul, um, the Afghan government's uh, previous government's collapse um, happened, and uh, you know we are all panicked because there was like in like a, almost ten of these girls were in Kabul, and we didn't know uh, what can happen. And obviously, we reached out to our um, contacts at the uh, Qatar governments, and they um, they very um, respond very fast, and they send a plan. Um, and we will be able to um, um, uh, take the girls in, in a safe place. And also, um, I really want to start thanking uh, um, um, and appreciated the efforts of the uh, Qatar governments because not they only help the girls to come to the safety, but also they give them an, uh, an opportunity and, and as well a scholarship uh, that they can be prepared for the further education. At the moment, they are all the studying uh, in um, uh, the academic bridge programs uh, in Qatar, and some of them graduated this um, this month, and they applied for uh, universities in the United States. And uh, I'm I'm glad that they uh, uh, they accepted several universities, including of engineering schools, you know, Tech Virginia, and uh, and they also accepted in uh, aerospace engineering. So we are very really excited about uh, them and their future. But obviously. There are dozens of the Afghan dreamers and uh, and millions of other girls uh, at your age that are still in Afghanistan. If there's anything else that we can do to help, I know like the conversations like this hopefully will spread the message um, to try and make sure that more girls in Afghanistan are able to get an education and beyond. And and um, I, one of your other achievements was with through the African Dreamers, which I found um, re really inspiring. Was when you had a, a load of girls that helped to make a ventilator during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and can you just tell us a bit more about that? Sure, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, um, uh, the need for creative solutions was critical. And at the time, I remember that uh, the governor of Herat, um, he, local government uh, of Herat, uh, he contacted us and asked our teams that if we can help him with the, uh, with the ventilator, because there was a huge shortage of the ventilators everywhere, including Afghanistan. And then uh, we decided to, to help and, uh, we and again the girls are started to working with a, a MIT design and uh, the interesting thing is that there are some parts that were not existing at the time in Afghanistan and it was very difficult to you know to um, um, to finding those parts and uh, and that was uh, um, they decided to using the car parts uh, for that uh, open source ventilator. They didn't only build the open source ventilator based on the design of MIT, but also they started to using the UVC lights and building the UVC robots to kill the germs uh, inside of the rooms. They build a spray robot, you know, they build computer games and uh, and many other innovative approach that uh, enable us to fight the coronavirus. They're doing that now. What are these girls going to be doing in the future? 
um, you know, seriously changing the world. In 2018, you joined a group called um, The New Now, which was set up by Virgin Unite. Um, and it's a brilliant group of rising leaders who um, have got amazing um, ch charities and entities like you have. Um, what what um what are you doing as a group at the moment, and um and what are sort of the challenges that you're tackling? I'm I'm so glad that I am part of this uh, uh, rising leaders, and I'm working with them. And uh, uh, like I feel that it's a great opportunity in my life that um, I'm working with the, this group, and uh, we actually created the uh, um, a group of friendships within us that we helping each other within our projects as well. And uh, we're working together to accomplish changes through our sometimes in collective uh, actions. And uh, we did the uh, amazing projects together in the past as well. At the moment, I think that uh, we are, uh, um, you know, uh, trying to develop uh, some plans around Kuwait in partnership with one and other uh, organizations. And also we um, are thinking to, um, to do some things in partnership with others around the conflict in our crimes and, uh, you know, our aims uh, uh, to achieve deep and sustainable and, uh, you know, transformative uh, global uh, impact. When you just sort of going back to Afghanistan, I'm just so interested to hear what's happening there. Um, you've obviously, I'm sure you've got friends, colleagues, possibly family members who are still there uh, and living under Taliban rule. Um, what do they have to say and what do you think they would say the world needs to hear? Well, you know, um, when you are living in a country where, where your leaders bond education for, you know, the second for secondary schools and for almost half of the population, half of the uh, millions of the children uh, in Afghanistan, uh, and there is a high rate of unemployment, uh, there is sanitation problem. The banking system is not working, uh, you know. Um, uh, Properly, and the you know health education health sector also is kind of collapse, and and they can go easily out of the country. And uh, unfortunately, the most of the talented and educated people, uh, they they left, uh, they went to exile. You know the and you know the poverty rates goes up, and violence and conflict exist. Um, uh, it's a very sad situation. Is there anything that gives you hope? Um, at the moment, and and what do you think the world can do to stand with the girls in Afghanistan? I think that I truly believe in new young generations of Afghanistan. They give me hope, and uh, you know, under twenties uh, in Afghanistan today, they have come up of age of you know of hard work, uh, democratic schemes. They are hopeful and talented and unwilling to relieve the tragedies that their parents experience um, regardless of what's happening in Afghanistan. I think that um, the young generations give me the hope because they wouldn't give up and uh, and they are different than um, I think that the generation 1990s and uh, and I think that education is a gene for regional development, peace and prosperity and but it must be a quality of education uh, that that is shaped for the future and I think that uh, it's it seems to be challenging but we have to push the, the Taliban and the the leaders of the country that they have to start to not only open the schools but also to they have to start to do the investment on the you know the STEM education uh, especially in the secondary high level education because that would be um, shape the future, shape the trajectory of the jobs, creation and economics progress. Uh, so I think that we should please do not give up on Afghanistan's and girls' education. And uh, always remember that Afghan women also deserve the same opportunity and the right to have the rights and do like many other women around the world, uh, go to the schools and have jobs and, you know, have access to justice and health. Well done for all you're doing. We will do all we can to help. Um, so just thank you, Roya. Thank you for supporting girls of Afghanistan, supporting girls around the world. Um, uh, and thank you for chatting to me today. I, I'd like to just end with one um, one comment from John Kerry. He has the, these powerful wor words, which um, he, he's the former US Secretary of State. Um, but he wrote after meeting with you, uh, lasting peace and prosperity in a unified Afghanistan will take root only when women have as loud a voice as men have. And I just think that's such true words. And so like, just thank you to people like you who are trying to get all these different voices heard. 
Thank you. Thank you to you and thank you to, you know, uh, Virgin Unites and uh, your fathers and uh, the new now that for supporting me through all these years. And made of your support, uh, I was, I'm not sure how I could do all of this uh, work. And I, I really appreciate that as well. Thank you for uh, making the things for us easier. Welcome. I appreciate that. Working with you. Thank you. Thank you.